are here with Loretta and George Whitesides, the co-creators of Yuri's Night. Good afternoon, you guys. Good afternoon. How you doing? Fabulous. How's the party going? It's going great. A lot of exciting stuff out here. Uh, tell us uh, how you got started, how you got the idea. Tell us all about it. Well, basically back in 1999, uh, we noticed that there was an anniversary, a space anniversary for April 12th that was both Russian and American. We thought, what a better way to bring the world together to celebrate space than April 12th. Beautiful. And then so uh, Yuri's Night, it got started seven years ago. Tell us about the first event and how it sort of exploded into a worldwide party. Well, we thought we'd just start in Houston and, and Moscow, uh, but our friends around the world said, well, what about Sydney? What about London? We want to play too. And so George had the idea of making it sort of a distributed event all around the world and calling it Yuri's Night. And so Yuri's Night was born. In 2001, we did the first event, and we had 69 parties around the world. And today we have uh, 124 parties in 35 countries. So and like six continents or something? Yes, six continents and uh, in two worlds. Yes, explain that. We've got one world that we're standing on right here. Where's, this? Yeah. <laughs> Where's the second world? Well, we're having an event in Second Life, which is a virtual world. And it's our first time in Second Life, and so we thought we definitely wanted to include them in our count. Um, and in addition, we also have Charles Simeone on the Sp International Space Station. Um, so you can interpret it either way. Are they watching up on the International Space Station tonight, or I know they have in the past, right? Uh, I don't know if they're watching, but Charles has uh, sent a video out to all the events to celebrate, to, like a message, um, you know, honoring all the events around the world, and like and you can visit on our website. So he's been really great. And so you're bringing the world together essentially with this, but it's also about highlighting space exploration, right? Tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. I mean, our vision is really about human exploration and making it something that's open to everybody and really creating that future for humanity um, and pushing the boundaries. So we think these are the people who can help us do it. Absolutely. And so then is part of that just getting people involved or getting them on the website, contacting their congressman? Tell me a little about that. Exactly. It's like everybody has this innate interest in space. And we wanted to give the general public a way to get um, involved and a way to express their passion for space and say, hey, you can be a part of this. Hey, you can support space, too. Hey, you can write your congressman. So, you know, people get excited about going back to the moon, going on to Mars and beyond. And we're like, hey, you know, come, come down. Come be a part of this. Come show your support and excitement for space exploration, too. And uh, what's uh, next on the uh, sort of event uh, plan, the next on the agenda for you guys? Well, the coalition has a really strong agenda for the rest of 2007. As you know, there's going to be some very, you know, uh, uh, important debates in Congress this year over the future direction of the vision for space exploration. And so the, the coalition is really working hard to engage um, a broad range of the American public to come out and to support the public through things like the spaceadvocate.com website, a really great thing, and I encourage people, your viewers, to uh, go out and visit it. They can learn more about the vision for space exploration, sign up for updates, and even figure out how they can communicate with their legislators, both on a state and national level. The landing of the Space Shuttle Discovery marks the beginning of a new era in space exploration, as NASA proves it has what it takes to boldly move forward into the next chapter of human spaceflight. This mission demonstrated NASA has the right stuff. Leaders capable of stepping up to risk. Teams that make that risk acceptable. Technology that allows us to continue this process of exploration and a vision that drives us at the gut level to achieve those objectives. It has been over 30 years since the president has outlined a vision for the space program, a vision for the nation. The International Space Station by 2010, as well as building a new generation of vehicles that will take us to the moon, Mars, and beyond. Given the challenges that this nation has faced over the last few years, this vision for space exploration is exactly what the country needs. That, of course, is going to set the stage for what we do over the next few years. It's not only going to drive what we do as astronauts going into space, but what happens to here on Earth, because uh, those things that we do in space are going to benefit us here. Even with the successful landing of Discovery, NASA has little time to celebrate. The next space shuttle launch is slated for late August. This took great leadership. It took courage within the team. It took technologies to make that risk acceptable, which then allows us to continue 
to expand on the vision that we have from President Bush to go back to the moon and on to Mars. It is time that we step forward and move back into space and move there to stay. And you're looking at quite a spectacular light show here. This is uh, by uh, Gaspo or One Sky, is your art. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about uh, what we're looking at right here. Okay, well, this is called the Chakratron, and what's inside is 122 microcontrollers. So there's 122 computers in there, and each one has a little RGB LED on it. So the problem was how to make one computer control all these lights without having to have hundreds and hundreds of wires. So it's actually a network talking, connecting all those computers together. And he is made out of thermoplastic and recycled glass pieces on the outside. And the mold I use to make him from comes from a 17th century Buddha out of Japan. And he had fallen off the hill and broken, and my friend fixed him. And we use that for the main shape to, to go from. Um, He's about just about a year old now, and it took about a year to get him to this to this stage. We went to the Ames Research Center um, image library that they have, and we actually have gathered images of the plane and of uh, different projects that they're, they're doing right now, current projects and older projects. They have historical projects. So we went through and grabbed images that we thought were relating to our visuals. So. It's going to be um, kind of like a collage interactive thing, and whatever images come up, we'll cycle through them and, you know, perform to the music. It's very beautiful. Anything yeah, else? Intuitive, and that's kind of what we do. It's kind of like uh, a loose narrative, so that's what we're doing. Um, any other thoughts you'd like to share with us? That's just it. Okay. Space is beautiful, and I'd like to thank NASA for opening up their facility and, and sharing what they're working on and, and giving people who normally don't have an opportunity to see these things, like us, uh, a chance to come and see it firsthand. And we're here with Director Pete Warden of the uh, NASA Ames Research Center. Director, um, what can you tell us about your What does it mean for NASA? Well, what NASA is all about is expanding human presence into the solar system. And it all began with uh, Yuri Gagarin's flight uh, 1961. But this is an opportunity to celebrate not only that accomplishment, but to begin to think about the future. And it's particularly important to bring in the next generation and have a little fun, but also think about where we're going to be in the next few decades. We were talking about that a little bit earlier. Uh, for my generation, it was the space shuttle, of course, Yuri Gagarin before that. What's, uh, what's coming up next? What's, uh, how is NASA sort of uh, raising the visibility of space and getting people interested? Well, as you know, we have a vision for space exploration, and, uh, and it's a really exciting vision. It starts with us returning to the moon uh, late next decade. Uh, we're busy now building the equipment, uh, the Orion uh, crew exploration vehicle and the Ares booster that will take us there. Uh, once that starts, uh, uh, it's going to be really exciting. This time, we're going to the moon to stay and uh, we're going to establish uh, long-term habitation there. We're going to learn how to live on another planet, uh, and then we're on our way to Mars. So it's, uh, this is really, the, uh, if you will, the nexus of history. We're starting, uh, we started out in 61, and uh, the next steps are, are now. Oh, <laughs> Tonight I'm actually demonstrating this piece here, and these uh, two robots that I'm using are um, motion activated and sound activated. So if you go up to them and clap, which there actually are signs on the side that says please applause the drawing, um, your participation will actually affect the outcome of the piece. So the drawing that you're seeing right now is about five hours in progress, um, and it's actually the whole kind of composition and scope of this has been shaped by the music that's happened this evening and also um, audience participa participation. Wow, so what we're looking at is like a compilation of everything that's going on, all of the energy, all of the, everything that's happening. Yeah. And so what is this, uh, what do you think, does it just represent randomness or is there something more to it than that? Um, no, it's actually a little bit more controlled than that. I mean, it's definitely, this piece when it's done will actually serve as kind of an entire document of this evening's um, music, people's interactions with the piece, um, ambient noises in the space. And that's all, folks.